All right, what do we have today? The generic smokeless grill. Okay. Me. Sorry, am I in your way? So it looks like that's where the handle goes, so some assembly required. That is a big window. We'll get to this in a second. Uh, feels like a non-stick surface there. Can make cleaning easy. All right, so that's going to be a pain. Heating elements. You do know the box is down there, right? Layers of layers of stuff. That's gonna be the grease tray. Right here. But this goes here. Yeah, that's right. And I'm kind of gimpy on the power cord. I guess it's designed to be used on a counter, so it's only too not supposed to be too far away from power. Together right quick the way I presume it's going to go oh that's nice so on electronics are right here that picks up nice easy to move and then I guess that's probably the filter so these don't feel tactile at all, so they're probably touch sensitive. Let's see what this has to say about it. Uh, 
All right, so warranty information. Carl Schmidt Sheon smoke the screw. Okay, so that wasn't on the front, it's on the box. Standard safety information. All right, so glass lid. Yep, nonstick grill plate. The heating element. This is the drip tray. A water tray? Is that for like smoking maybe? Base unit. Here's the button controls. All right, so that's a water tray down there. You're supposed to put two cups of water in before using it. And that's right, that is the handle. Is there assembly instructions for the lid? No, no instructions for how to put the lid together. I mean, it's pretty simple, but it would have been nice to include that. All right, let's get this lid together, I guess. curve follows. That's good. I'm going to guess this is how it goes. Okay, I'm back. I think I figured out the, the direction that makes the most sense. Again, without instructions or contact the manufacturer, this is a best guess on how to do this. So this rubber grommet and this washer both come off the screw. All right, like so. Place the rubber grommet in the hole, the washer on top of that, and then bring the handle back around to here. Then, of course, drop everything. And then screw through the top. I would have appreciated some instructions on that, but once screwed down, it feels pretty good. Now, since this is a metal screw, a tapping screw at that, on plastic, I would not overly tighten it. But uh, that feels pretty solid there. All right, and that goes right there. Let's plug this in and see what it feels like. Let's get the sound out of it. Now that I've rearranged a few things, Let's see if we can't figure what this looks like and sounds like when it's turned on. Pretty simple plug. There you go. That's the fan on. So set temperature by just up and down. 450 to 200 range. That fan isn't too loud. I don't really feel anything back here. So I don't know. It's very light. 
and it's just in the back. So I wanna make sure that stays open. I guess it helped help put the lid on all the way. So a little bit of venting around here. It's starting to heat up. It smells like a ceramic heater. Hopefully with the use that smell goes away. All right, so we're gonna set it at 200 and see if it does anything special once it gets to that temperature. I'd like to think that that blinking light would turn to a solid light. Or something click over. Probably just a heating element expanding is my guess. I didn't add the water, so I don't know if that's gonna cause a problem. No indication that it's reached its temperature yet. Still sitting at the 200 mark. The plate's definitely warmed up. I can definitely feel the plate's warmed up quite a bit. All right, so the light stopped flashing, so I'm gonna guess that means it's reached 200 degrees. And the fan seems to be more for convection than venting, because there's a lot of airflow inside of here. I guess it feels like there's more than it actually looks like. All right, well, next step is to cook with it. I'll be back.